How to load Spectrum games without a tape recorder. The first step is to cable up the Speccy in a traditional way. In other words, one cable into the TV socket, nine volts from a standard Spectrum power adapter, and then thirdly, a mono lead into the ear connector. It's through that that we'll get the game. The next step is to fire up the telly. Switch on the specky. And key in load, quote, quote, and press enter. And the spec is listening for the incoming audio file. The next step is to plug the mono lead into a 21st century device. That could be the speaker socket on a PC, or a laptop, or a tablet. It could be an MP3 player. But I'm choosing to use a mobile phone. This is a Nokia Lumia 520. The mono lead then plugs in where stereo headphones would usually go. And as soon as that's pressed home, it mutes the sound. So we won't have to listen to the Speccy's horrible screeching as it loads a game. The phone has four files, starting with a pair of MP3s, including Manic Minor, which would take about four and a half minutes to load. Then there's the same pair of files in WAV format, but special WAV format because they turbo load, Manic Minor taking about 24 seconds. These special WAVs have been produced by an amazing little program called OTLA. It produces a file which is in two parts, starting with a turbo loader and then the actual data for the game in highly compressed format. So I'll click on, or should I say tap on, Manic Miner. It's loading and we can see from the spectrum from the screen that it's actually loading. It gives us a progress bar across the bottom here. 11, 12, 13, 14. Isn't it exciting? Stop laughing, of course it's exciting. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And the game's loaded. Press enter and the game's running. So that's a quick rundown on the basics. Given that you're still watching this video, I dare say you're wondering how to get hold of the audio file for a particular game. It's easy. All the hard work's been done by clever people and everything needed is already available online. And it's free. At the simplest level, it's just a question of going to a site such as mlinternet.co.uk which has got quite a few of the more popular games. Let's have a look at Chucky Egg. Right click, save target as, and select a destination. I have a memory stick here on which I put a couple of folders. I'll select the first one, games at normal speed and then click on save. And that's it. If I now bring back the folders, click on specy stuff, click on games at normal speed, and sure enough, there's the MP3 ready to run. What could be simpler? If a ready-made game can't be found, it's time to get your hands dirty with a bit of do-it-yourself where the first decision seems to be normal load time or turbo load. My personal view is that whilst it can be fun to play a game on an original specy, there's no fun at all in waiting four or five minutes for the game to load. I think that turbo load is the only way to go. But there's a slight problem, as I found out recently when I first started getting to grips with the subject. It can be difficult to know where to start mainly because there are so many excellent sites 
that cover every aspect of Specky games. I don't mind admitting that initially I got overwhelmed by all the information. So for the benefit of anybody else hitting that same initial barrier, I've thrown together a brief overview of many of the things that can be done, along with links to websites that I found informative and easy to understand. They're at kevpar.com slash miss, short for miscellaneous, slash specky.php. There's a link in the text below this YouTube video. To prepare for making a turbo loading game, we need to make some folders on the memory stick and then grab stuff from the internet. So I'll highlight specky stuff, right click, new folder, zips for the files which we download. Right click, new folder, input files. Right click, new, and guess what? Folder, OTLA. The name of the magic little program that's going to actually create the turbo loading file. Now we hop over to kevpar.com and halfway down under DIY we click on worldofspectrum.org which is where all the files are found and we go into archive and at the top of the list games Decisions, what to select. I know, J, Jet Set Willy. This is a game with a sound that used to drive me mad. The children were forever playing this damn thing. Morning, noon and night. So, I highlight and click Jet Set Willy. And down here are the download links. A tzx.zip and a tap.zip. I believe it's the tzx that we want, so I'll click on that. And in the dialog box, I'm going to choose Save As. Where is our specky stuff? Zips. And click on Save. It's downloaded so we can open the folder. Here's the zip highlighted. So I'll double click it to see what's in it. There's just one file, jet set willy da -da -da dot tzx. So I'll click that, drag it down, and drop it in input files. Next step is to hop back to kevpar.com and this time down in turbo load I'm going to click on OTLA bin win 2.2 zip which takes us to the OTLA residence where we'll select the second item OTLA bin win 2.20 dot zip click And in the dialog box, we choose Save As. It already knows to use the zips folder from the last download. So I'll click Save. It's running a security scan on that, and it's, it's created is OK. So Open Folder. OTLA, or OTLA, is highlighted. I'll do the same as last time, I'll double click it to see what's in the zip. There are four folders and three files. So I'll click on edit, select all, give a click on them, and drag them down to the OTLA folder.
So I'll now click on OTLA and sure enough there are the seven files. So we've finished with the internet and we can close the zips folder. That completes the preparations. We're now ready to run OTLA and produce our turbo loading game. When OTLA downloaded there was no setup program to install under Windows. It's entirely freestanding. So to run it we have to navigate to OTLA.exe and double click it. Let's close Explorer for the moment. OTLA version 2.2. The first thing that jumps out is this coloured block, a drop down list, where you can select the machine. I'm happy to stay with ZX Spectrum. We click on File, New plus Add, and it looks in its own samples folder which is not what we want so we go up a couple of levels go to our input files folder where we can double click on jetsetwilly da -da -da -dot tzx and here are the blocks comprising the game and there are no red warnings which means that OTLA should be able to produce a turbo version for us it's well documented that OTLA can't always produce a turbo version apparently it depends on the way in which the game manufacturer made the loading process anyways we'll click on JSW to select it and we'll also click on this second item despite the fact it's got a strange looking name we'll take everything that we can get we'll click on OK there are the blocks and I've just noticed there's a typo there in the program bulk name I'm sure that should be block name up in the right hand corner we'll choose the model 48k I gather that this is more or less documentary that it doesn't really matter what you have in there because the game itself will determine what it runs on there's an accelerate option here we'll click that because it sounds good and all that remains now that we've done the settings is to click on SBB and WAV. SBB is stream of binary blocks. I don't think we'll use that file. What we are interested in is the WAV version. So I'll click it and straight away it tells us that it's created the file and stuffed it in OTLA output folders and it has a total load time of 27.2 seconds. OK. A little bit of housekeeping. Let's just open up OTLA, output, grab jetset willy da -de -da -dot wav and drop it into games which turbo load. This is so that at some future time, when I come back to the specky stuff memory stick, I'll be able to see quickly where I want to grab the file from, games which turbo load. OK, end of the housekeeping. So OTLA has done its job, but before we close it down, let's just have a look at this play button. If I had a Spectrum's mono lead connected into the speaker output socket on the back of the computer, I could actually run the game from here, which I'm going to do in a second or two, just for the hell of it. You may want to turn your speakers down because this is likely to be quite noisy. I'm clicking play now. certainly looked and sounded healthy. I've no doubt it would have loaded the game. Time to say thank you Mr OTLA and cheerio. Thanks for watching. 
I hope that somebody, somewhere, someday, will get some benefit from these ramblings. Adios. <laughs>